हे गाइस वेलकम टू डेटा ट्रैक योर वन स्टॉप चैनल फॉर ऑल द डेटा साइंस एंड मशीन लर्निंग अपडेट्स In today's video, we will look at GANs, which stands for Generative Adversarial Networks and Stable Diffusion. These are advanced Gen AI techniques to generate incredibly realistic images, videos, audios, and so on. So, what we will cover in today's session is we will start with introduction to GANs. GANs stands for Generative Adversarial Networks. These are powerful tool for generating incredibly realistic images and videos and voice and so on. And uh, we will look at how it generates new data. The power of GANs lies in its ability to generate new data instance that resembles the training data. For example, if you have trained a GAN network on human faces, it will start generating new human faces, something like these. These are GAN generated human faces. And also we'll cover different other use cases of GANs apart from generating incredibly realistic images, videos and voice recordings. We'll also do uh, a practical implementation of GANs. We will where we will use ANNs in one of the notebooks and CNN in another of the notebook to implement GAN. And uh, at the end of that notebook, you will yourself be able to generate uh, realistic images just from noise. You can just have noise as input and start generating realistic, incredible images. Then also we will look at conditional GANs. What are conditional GANs? They modify the original GAN architecture to allow for directed generation of images based on specific conditions. So it's a directed generation of images. For example, if you train GANs on human faces, they will start generating human faces, right? But you just don't want human faces. You want some direction. For example, you can say generate human face with short nose and brown hairs. So you want a human face with short nose and brown hairs. So this kind of conditions you can give while generating uh, Im images, videos and so on. So we'll look at conditional GANs as well. And finally, we will look at stable diffusion. Stable diffusion is more advanced technique. It's a successor of GANs. It's an enhanced approach, which instead of adversarial training, we'll look at that what adversarial training is. Uh, instead of using adversarial training that GANs do, they use a different process, which is the diffusion process and which is found to be more stable for image generation and also it cleverly uses UNET and autoencoder architecture. So, so much to cover in this video. Let's get started. So, we'll start with GANs. GANs stands for Generative Adversarial Network. It's one of the most significant breakthroughs in artificial intelligence over the past decade. GANs were designed and developed by Ian Goodfellow and his colleagues in 2014. GAN cleverly uses game theory to generate incredibly realistic images, videos and so on like you can see in the screen. Uh, let's look at the training process of GANs. The GAN consists of two models, a generator and discriminator and it uses game theory. And the training is adversarial. Adversarial means adversary. The two players, the generator player and the discriminator player, we can call them as players. The player, the two players are enemy of each other. They want to compete with each other. The GANs consist of two distinct models, generator and discriminator. The two models are trained simultaneously. That is, they are trained together in a zero-sum game framework. What do we mean by zero-sum game framework? It means it's an adversarial training where the gain of one model is lost to another and vice versa. Uh, so, this is how the training process will look like in a simplistic diagram. Let me explain in more details. First of all, let's look at the generator. What will generator do? Generator is designed to generate believable data. The generator instances, the generated instances become more accurate as the generator trains aiming to fool the discriminator by producing novel data instances that appears as if they were drawn from the actual data distribution. So what generator does is it takes Z as an output. Z is just random noise. It will take random noise as an output and try to generate some image and discriminator, which is a classification model. Its task is to classify that what is real and what is fake. So as the generator uh, trains more and more, that is at the advanced stage of its training, it will start generating realistic images, which will fool the discriminator, whether it's real or fake. And the task of discriminator is to distinguish between genuine data and the synthetic data. That is the real image and the fake data, fake image. It penalizes the generator for producing fake, synthetic or implausible data. So this is how the two models train. One, the task of discriminator is to discriminate between real and fake. Generator's uh, task is to start generating such realistic data that it becomes hard for the discriminator to recognize which is real, which is fake or what is real, what is fake. 
now we'll look at training process and the best part of this slide will be we won't just talk in theory but we'll look at the actual training process in code and the way i like learning things is directly look at the code once you look at the code it becomes sim very simple that okay this is what gans are doing whatever we talked in theory that the two models are training in uh, together simultaneously and competing with each other it will be clear with this five six lines of code so let's look at the training process the two models are trained simultaneously in a adversarial competition way as the training progresses the generator improve its ability to create data that look like the training data which is as real as the training data and the discriminator also keeps on improving in ability to tell the difference which is trying to discriminate between real and fake image it also keeps on improving itself and ideally when the gan is properly trained it we should reach a level where discriminator is guessing at random whether it's a real image or fake image so because the real image because the fake image is as real as the real image and we have already seen this uh, diagram where noise is passed generator uses this noise to generate some image and the task of discriminator is to discriminate between the two next we will look at the code uh, and it will become super clear that how the training is happening so the training happens in two uh, parts the first part and the second part so uh, the training happens for many iterations and in each iteration both discriminator and generator is trained so what happens in the first line of code you can see that we um, gen we take a sample of real images these two lines of code we are taking the sample of real images next two lines of code uh, we are just using the generating some noise and using that noise to generate images so this part generator is some neural network some model uh, with which we have generated the images and uh, in the first part of the iteration discriminator learns to classify between real and fake images and as you can see we have freezed the generator weight so whatever the generator has learned its weight in in when we train a neural network we called uh, the parameters as weights so parameters of the generator are, are freezed for the first part and uh, from noise we generate some images that is we have generated the images we have freezed the weights of generator and now the task of discriminator is to discriminate uh, between the two so it's a classification model so what we have said discriminator trainable equal to true so train the weights of this model which is a classification model and uh, for the real images the the real images the label is one the training target is one that is it's a real image and for fake images the the generated images the target is zero np.0 zeros you can see np.0 zeros for the fake images and so we are training a classifier with label 1 for real images and 0 for fake images so that the discriminator is able to find those features which can help it discriminate between the two this is the first part of the iteration in the second part of the same iteration what we are doing we are uh, yes this is the second part of the uh, uh, iteration in the second part of the iteration discriminator dot trainable equal to false which means we are freezing the parameters of classification model whatever classification model has learned Uh, we have freezed it we don't want to change any parameters of it and we draw some random noise and we are training the generator model the whole gan network so we are training the whole gan network keeping freezing the weights of discriminator such that the no, the uh, generated images the generated images has a target of 1 which basically means we are saying that the classification models we want change the parameters we want tweak the parameters it's freezed but still the uh, the generator model is unfreezed so change the parameters of this model so that we get a target of 1 for fake images so uh, let me reiterate the whole process in the first pass of the iteration generator weights are freezed we generate images and discriminator is allowed to change its weight so that it can discriminate between real and fake now whatever the discriminator classifier has learned we will freeze it and we will say that now tweak the generator weights so that the generated images comes out with target of 1 with the same classifier without any tweaking its weight so so what does it mean that we want to tweak the classification uh, uh, model weight it means that the discriminator is same now the generator has to improve itself so that uh the generated images starts coming as 
लेबल वन डेट इज द प्रोबिलिटी ऑफ बींग रियल इंक्रीजेस फ्रॉम द सेम क्लासिफिकेशन मॉडल विच इज फ्रीज तो सो ओनली द जेनरेटर पैरामीटर्स विल चेंज सो इन द फर्स्ट पास डिस्क्रिमिनेटर इज ट्रेंड इन द सेकेंड पास जेनरेटर इज ट्रेंड कीपिंग द डिस्क्रिमिनेटर फ्रीज्ड इन दिस वे द टू मॉडल्स आर ट्रेनिंग साइमल्टेनियसली एंड इंप्रूविंग इच अदर सो दे आर कंपीटिंग विथ इच अदर एंड इंप्रूविंग एज द ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्रेसेस सेम थिंग बट वी हैव सीन इन द कोर्ट लेट्स ऑल्सो डिफाइन इट इन टर्म्स ऑफ फंक्शन सो द गोल ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेटर इज टू मैक्सिमाइज द लॉग लाइकलीहुड नाउ दिस थिंग्स दिस फॉर्मूला मे लुक वेरी सिमिलर टू द क्रॉस इंट्रॉपी बट इन क्रॉस इंट्रॉपी we minimize the cross entropy right and uh, there is minus sign so what we can say instead of minimizing the cross entropy we can also say it's a maximization problem where we maximize the log likelihood so that minus sign of cross entropy will become plus and min will become max so we so the part of the role of discriminator is to maximize the log likelihood where exp data is the probability that it's a real image one for real image zero for fake image similarly is ez because z was noise if you remember that is how we depict, depicted the noise so ez will always be one for fake image and zero for real image so what is this part saying it is saying that the probability of discriminator for the real image should be one and the probability of discriminator for the fake image should be zero so that this log likelihood could be maximized and now we know the task of generator is to fold the discriminator so its task is that this second term of the formula should be minimized that is the training out uh, the predicted probability from from the uh, discriminator model should come out as one that is it should say that it's a real image so the task of generator is to minimize this whatever the discriminator is trying to maximize the task of generator is to minimize it so uh the the first formula discriminator goal is to maximize the log log likelihood which is same as minimizing the cross entropy and generator goal is to fool the discriminator fake image to be recognized as real so together we can say the it's a, it's a min max function where um gain training becomes a min max game where g wants to minimize the value function while d wants to maximize it d wants to maximize the log likelihood and g wants to minimize it so in formulas this is how we can write it uh next we'll look at some more use case of gan and then they will directly jump to the code where you can start generating your own real looking images so uh definitely one use case of gan is uh, images and video generations gan excels in creating realistic images videos music significantly enhancing art and entertainment these images you can use a lot of places i start using them in my thumbnails in lot of my slides i use these generated images because you don't have copyright issues and so on right so you can use gans for generating realistic images for enhancing art and entertainment second is data augmentation gans can generate synthetic images for training models and this can be helpful in situations where data availability is limited due to rarity of a certain conditions for example in medical domain let's say there is some kind of disease where there are very few images you can pass it through gan and generate more synthetic images or data which can help you in uh, enhancing the data for training your model it can it is also useful in privacy and security uh, perspective because gans can generate synthetic data that mimic the statistical property of sensitive data so one point i want to make it clear that gans can not only start generate images videos audios but it can also work on tabular data you can also use gans to generate synthetic data with the same statistical property of the sensitive data you want to train your model on allowing researchers and developers to work with data that doesn't compromise users privacy so sometimes you may have data which can have pii data which is personal information identifiable data there what you can do you can pass it through gan to generate synthetic data the synthetic data will have the same properties as the original data but still it won't be of any particular person so it won't reveal the identity of any person as well as it will have the holistic properties of the actual data so you can uh, use that to share work data and so on which is uh, passed or generated through gans and uh, the data actual was uh, private but we have made it safe by generating synthetic data which has the same statistical property of sensitive data but not actual uh, individuals data uh, it is 
we we also looked at conditional gains that is we want add we want to add direction to the generation of images it's a directed generation of images based on a specific condition for example generate human face with short nose and brown hairs so given a condition we want to generate have directed generation of images similarly conditional gains can be extended to style gains where you pass one image and one style image and the idea is to combine the content of one image with the style of another so for all these type of use cases uh, gains are uh, go to models next we'll come to the interesting part the practical implementation of gains what i will do i will uh, i have taken this mn ist dataset which was created by yan likun and team for evaluating machine learning models uh, capability in recognizing handwritten digits so it will have this kind of handwritten digits and what we will do is we will use gans to generate images which looks like characters like handwritten characters which may not be the actual character but which looks like character and it fools the discriminator whether it's a real image or a generated image and for the same task we will also use cnns why cnns because we know cnns uh perform better uh, for images kind of data where there is local properties like the pixels nearby say share similar properties and all so in the same code that we have seen we will replace the generator and discriminator with cnn based neural network and uh, <clears throat> interestingly it will be very easy for you to understand because we have already seen the code that it will be the same this will be the same code for training but we will have some more things like reading the data set designing the network and post the training will happen with the same code so let's get started also i will share the link of these uh, notebooks in the uh, description section i will share the link of the notebooks in the description section of the video so let's look at the code first of all we will uh, read the data set the data set is mnist data set which was created by yan lukun and team uh, it consists of 28 cross 28 pixel images so 28 cross 28 means 784 dimensional vector and each image also has a label that which digit it, it is uh, signifying so these are the 250 750 cross 84 dimensional vector and also the label that it's uh, representing 1014 and so on and there are 42000 images and uh, what we have done is we have also uh plotted the images so that we can look at the data set so this is how the images look like and for plotting we have used simple matplotlib uh, plot library and this is how the images look like 10140735 and so on these are the images now we will train our gan in every iteration both the generator and discriminator will be trained alternately freezing the weights of the other model in first pass of the iteration the discriminator will learn to classify between real and fake image and in the second part of the iteration the generator will learn to modify the fake image in a way that it becomes tough for the discriminator to classify and this is repeated for many iterations and at the end of it we would have implemented a ann based discriminator which will start generating images which will be hard for discriminator to classify whether it's real or fake and we'll look at the images it will be looking like some actual handwritten digits the digits may not be the 0 to 9 but it will look like some digit because that is what gans do they look, start generating uh, images which resemble training data but not actual training data right so one more thing that we have done is gray scale images that are provided to us in the data set they have 784 dimensions right uh, and the day to day images that we see they have three channels rgb but gray scale image just has one channel and pixel values vary vary between 0 to 255 to make it simpler for the network to learn we can normalize the uh, values that is 0 to 255 values it will we can just make it decimal so that is it ranges between uh, some range some smaller range like say 0 to 1 or minus 1 to plus 1 in our case we have uh, done this normalization divide by 255 into 2 minus 1 which will make the pixel values range between minus 1 to plus 1 uh, and uh, finally when whatever output we produce from the generator which is an image we would ensure that the output generated the pixel values the generator are also between minus 1 to plus 1 uh, so now we'll start creating our models the first is generator model uh, here we have used simple an ann network the input dimension is 100 so we have used a noise uh of 100 dimensions and output dimension will be an image so it will be of 784 dimension that is 28 cross 28 pixels 
and we have dense network that is fully connected network of 100 neurons batch normalization leaky relu one more dense layer that is one more fully connected layers of 100 neurons batch normalization leaky relu and finally we have output uh, dimension which is 784 dimension and activation is 10h because 10h values uh, lies from minus 1 to plus 1 and that is what we want the pixel values to be and finally once we have the output image since the values between minus 1 to plus 1 we can uh, add 1 divide by 2 into 255 we will again get the values between 0 to 255 so we it's like whatever the uh, normalization we did we did it's easy to denormalize it as well and now look at discriminator discriminator is a classification model right so here we take the input image whether it's a noisy image that is the fake image or the real image we pass it through dense layer which is fully connected layers of 512 uh, neurons leaky relu dropout again 256 dimensional uh, fully connected layer and finally one dimensional fully connected layers the final output has to be of one neuron because it's a probability class uh, uh, z between zero and one and the activation will be sigmoid so finally we get the probability whether this image whether it's real or fake uh, we should be able to predict with the probability so this is the discriminator model and as i was saying since it's a classification model loss is binary cross entropy optimizer we have used adam and uh, now building the whole GAN network, we have the generator, we have the discriminator and we have seen in uh, the slides as well, let me show once again that uh, we have the generator, we have the discriminator and together it's the GAN network. So that is what we have done here as well. Uh, we have built the discriminator, build the generator, uh, both of them and then we have the GAN, GAN network which is build GAN. What will, what will build GAN do? It will have the two models sequentially. Uh, in place and when we are training uh, generator we will make discriminator trainable false and we will when we will train the discriminator we will ensure that generator weights are not tweaked and we can look at the summary of the two models so this is what the generator model is it takes noise as input and finally it produces 784 dimensional output which is the image and the discriminator model which takes uh, 512 neurons and again fully connected layer of 256 and finally just produces one single value which is the probability and uh, also let's look at the training process which is nothing new we have what we have already seen in the slide we take real image we take uh, noise and uh, generate the fake image discriminator trainable equal to true because in the first pass of the iteration we train the discriminator to be able to discriminate between real and fake for real image the target is one for fake image the target is zero you can see np dot zeros and uh, when we in the second pass of the same iteration we train the generator so discriminator trainable equal to false and from noise we generate the fake image but here we want to train only the generator network freezing the uh, discriminator network so that the generator network tweak its parameter start generating as real image as possible so that the label comes out to be one so we are training with label of one so whatever here we are we were training the fake image with a label of zero so that discriminator is able to tweak its parameter to classify between real and fake here we want the generator to tweak its parameter so that the uh, discriminator emits probability one that is it's a real image and in multiple iterations the from noise we will start generating actual looking incredible realistic images so let's look at the uh, training process so this is how the training starts we are starting with completely noisy images right and as the training increases noise is reducing and let's look at uh, different uh, phases of the training here something like symbols have started to come and let's look at after 800 iterations what happens so after 800 iterations you can see that it is start generating some symbols which may not be the actual symbol but they are lo looking like a some symbol and it is able to fool the discriminator that these are real images though they are fake so this is the ann based gan implementation uh, and as i was saying that we will also look at cnn based gan implementation why cnn because convolution neural network are supposed exactly assume to do better with images because of the filters, poolings and the mechanism they were built to work better with images, right? We want to look at the complete code because the complete code is, code is same as the last code, just the networks we have tweaked. 
that is the generator model and discriminator model instead of ANN it will have CNN in it. So let us look at the generator, build generator you can see we take the noisy image of 100 cross 100 dimension we pass it through dense layer so it becomes 256 cross 7 cross 7 so these many uh, uh, neurons are there in the dense layer and uh, next what we do is we reshape 256 cross 7 cross 7 to 7 cross 7 cross 256 just a reshaping step and then the power of convolution network comes we have used con 2d network uh, with 128 filters so i have mentioned here that why cnns are better cnns work well with images due to their use of filters and pooling layers filters in cnns are effective in detecting similar attributes if you are let's say classifying some animals images uh, filter one filter may detect nose one filter may detect ear one filter may detect mouth and so on so these filters can detect some features in a close proximity where where the nearby neighbor, neighboring pixels are very similar in nature or they together make a feature or a component so these filters are very uh, effective in generating uh, attributes within close neighborhood allowing the network to recognize uh, visual patterns the capability is crucial for generating new images and distinguishing between real and generated images so we have used a uh, convolutional based generator now we have already seen we used a dense network we did the reshaping then we pass it through conv2d transpose so conv2d transpose is like a filter only but it's a magnifying filter so we have used 128 filters as i was saying different filter may you detect different type of features we have used 128 filters so what will happen this 7 cross 7 cross 256 7 cross 7 will get magnified two times because because we have used this stride of two so this will become 14 cross 14 and since we have used 128 filter the third dimension will become 128 because we are trying to detect 128 different type of features again we have used one more conv 2d here where we have just used one filter see you can see output shape 3 uh, output shape 2 which is the last dimension we have used uh, just one filter and we have used stride 2 so what will happen this uh, so so uh, what will happen this 14 cross 14 cross 128 128 will become 1 and 14 cross 14 will get magnified because con 2d transpose is magnifying filter it will become 28 cross 28 cross 1 and uh, interestingly what is this this is a dimension of images so we will say this is our image and same here also we have used the 10h activation for discriminator again we have used convolutional neural network based discriminator we take the image and here we pass filter to it con 2d 64 filters of size 4 cross 4 with a stride of 2 again we pass one more 128 filters of 4 cross 4 size with a stride of 2 and finally we have a flattening layer and just one fully connected layer with one neuron because finally we want probability which is a single neuron with activation of sigmoid and we can look at the model summary and rest all the steps are same along with the training it's the same code just that the generator and discriminator model we have instead of ANN we have replaced it with CNN because CNN supposedly do well with images and uh, we will have we can see the uh, summary of discriminator and summary sorry the summary of generator and the summary of discriminator here you can see finally image is getting produced here finally probability is getting produced and now let's look at the process one few things i have noticed that it was able to convert noise into image pretty faster because of cnns and it was able to generate less noisy images better images let me show you the final output uh, you can see that these images are very crystal clear while this image have some noise in it while CNN based images are more clear. So uh, CNN converts faster one thing and secondly the generated images are more cleaner because CNNs are built for images. And uh, taking noise as input the generator has, generator has start creating images that looks like digits which is confusing the discriminator in classifying between true uh, digits and the generated digits. So uh, that completes our practical session. Next we will look at conditional GANs. We already briefly talked about conditional GANs that in conditional GANs what we want is directed generation of images based on some specific conditions. This is the GAN network where we could have uh, passed lot of faces and it will start generating some face. But in conditional GANs we just don't want 
द फेसेस बट वी वॉन्ट सम डायरेक्टेड फेसेस सो कंडीशनल मॉडल एक्सटेंड्स गैंस बाई अलाउंग यूजर टू स्टीट द जेनरेशन प्रोसेस थ्रू कंडीशनिंग वेरिएबल सच एज लेबल्स और टैक्स मेकिंग द जेनरेशन प्रोसेस कंट्रोलेबल एंड मोर डाइवर्स सो हाउ वी विल डू दैट इन द सेम गैंस वेयर वी वेर पासिंग ह्यूमन फेसेस हेयर वी विल पास सम मोर कंडीशनिंग वेरिएबल हेयर इट कैन बी समथिंग लाइक ए लेबल दैट वेन एवर वी आर पासिंग ए रियल इमेज वी आर पासिंग ए लेबल एज वेल लाइक एशियन मेल विद ब्लू आईज एंड ऑल्सो वेन वी आर जेनरेटिंग फेक इमेज वी आर प्रोवाइडिंग सम लेबल मेल विथ शॉर्ट नोज एंड ब्राउज हेयर सो यू कैन सी दैट द फेस जेनरेटेड इज ऑफ ब्राउन हेयर्स एंड एंड शॉर्ट नोज सो हाउ द ट्रेनिंग प्रोसेस वर्क इज इन द डिस्क्रिमिनेटर ट्रेनिंग द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ द गैन ट्रेनिंग द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ एवरी आइट्रेशन इज वेयर द डिस्क्रिमिनेटर ट्रेन राइट इट गेट्स बेटर टू क्लासीफाई सो इट विल गेट बेटर टू क्लासीफाई बिटवीन जेनरेटेड एंड द रियल इमेज एज वेल एज इट विल सी दैट हाउ क्लोज और वट इज द क्लोजनेस ऑफ द label with the re real images so it will also do that image to label similarity matching that is it will also have a language model component which will try to understand the uh, label and map it with the real image and say that okay this is what the label was and what is this is what real image is this is how the image will look like when the lab label is such and same thing it will try to do for the generator also even we have passed just noisy vector but the label is there so it will try to convert the noise into an image and that image should also look like the label passed so there will both for discriminator and generator there will be two loss functions one will be the uh, definitely the classification loss for the discriminator and also whether the generated image is uh, matching with the provided label or not so in this way we are able to control the generation and this uh, rise gives birth to conditional gains and also with that we complete our chapter on conditional gains and we move to the successor of gains which is stable diffusion so let's next move to stable diffusion stable diffusion can be rightly called successor of gains they are a type of generative model that utilizes a different approach compared to traditional gains while gans were based on game theoretical approach where the two neural networks generator and discriminator were competing with each other stable diffusion is built on diffusion model that involves gradually transforming data into structured data from a structured state into random noise and back from random noise to structured data so gans were based on adversarial training of game theory the two networks were competing with each other while stable diffusion is based on diffusion model which is a iterative process of converting structured data into random noise and random noise back into structured data you can see here this is a cat image we are adding noise to it adding noise to it adding noise to it adding noise to it this is the forward diffusion and in the reverse diffusion we are subtracting the last added noise to get uh, less noisy image again subtracting the last added noise to get more less noisy image and finally we will have a crystal clear image of cat so this is the diffusion process in forward pass we start adding more and more noise in iteratively and in the reverse diffusion process we start removing the noise iteratively uh so diffusion process involves iteratively adding noise to structured data in multiple iterations to create a randomized state then iteratively reversing this by systematically denoising the data this approach allows the generation of detailed high quality outputs from noisy starting point through control iteration that is once the model has learned this you can just pass it noise and it will just do a reverse diffusion to generate images depending on the conditions that you have passed we'll look into that so let's understand the training process the training process we have already covered it in brief so training process starts with clean data it can be your real data samples which could be your real images and in the forward pass you start iteratively adding noise gradually add noise to this data over t time stamps over multiple time stamps and the transformation will look something like this where alpha xt minus 1 plus 1 minus alpha epsilon so alpha means how much weightage you are giving to the actual image and how much of the noise you are adding so this is the actual image and you will add some noise to it the noise will be uh, sampled from standard normal distribution and you will keep on adding noise till it becomes completely noisy and the reverse training process it will take all sort of images little add no noise added more noise added 
after the fifth iteration of noise how it will take the image after the seventh iteration it will take the image so it will take images of different iterations of noise added and it will try to just reverse uh, the uh, one iteration of noise that is if i give it this image it should be able to produce this if i give it this image it should be able to produce this if i give it this image it should be able to provide this if i give it this image it should be able to provide this so it is just it the power the task of reverse process that is model training of removing noise is to just undo the last added noise here we train a neural network to denoise uh, the data so construct xt minus 1 from xt so here we were the xt was the added noise and here we in the denoising we want xt minus 1 that is the real image to get to get the real image what we will have to do we will have to find this the model has to find this function f0 which is a function of noise looking at the image and then once it has found the function it has to use this formula that how much weight is to give to noise and uh, uh, subtract it and then divide it by 1 by alpha t to get the original image and if you look or work upon the two formulas you will see that it is just reversing the um, noise added and it is doing that by learning this f0 which is a function of image and finding how much noise is added to it in just the last iteration so so that is what it does just remove the noise of the last added iteration so this is how the training happens now looking at the whole picture and few more details about stable diffusion the diffusion process use compressed latent dimension via variational autoencoder for memory efficiency decoding back to original dimension at the end so look at this diagram so what it does is uh we pass during the training process process we pass the image but we don't work on the original image dimension we convert it into a smaller dimension some latent dimension let's say 64 cross 64 even if it's not visible i will just uh, 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 say it loudly and you can understand from the boxes so we convert image into latent dimension of 64 cross 64 and then in that latent dimension the forward pass and reverse pass will happen so that we add the noise and the denoising model is able to learn to denoise the data and finally we will have the denoise data of uh, 64 cross 64 that is the latent dimension only and this uh, loop shows that it's a iterative process over multiple iterations different levels of noises are added and at different iterations uh, denoising model is also learning to denoise the image and uh, the second point is for denoising we use unit architecture because it is proficient in detail restoration and localization so this yellow box the dark yellow box which is the denoising module we use unit architecture which is a type of neural network architecture which is better in restoring the uh, image that is finding the noise and uh, re uh, subtracting it to give us denoised image so we, unit architecture is used and for converting to latent dimension variational autoencoders are used now third important detail textual content often in the form of clip based embedding guides the diffusion process to ensure the generated image aligned with the specific textual description so similar as con what we have seen in conditional GAN here also for the real image that we used for training where we added noise and we also learned to denoise it also the label was passed for that image something like an astronaut riding a horse so for the training process along with the image the actual label the textual guidance in the form of clip based embedding clip is a type of neural network model which uh, is pre-trained so that the image embedding and the text embedding uh, have very much semantic similarity so so that is not important here but the point is also the textual guidance in the form of some embedding which is clip based embedding is used in the process which is during the forward pass as well as reverse pass along with the image these embeddings the textual guidance is also passed every time and once the model is trained let's look just at the inference process and this uh, image is just of the inference process that is we are passing just latent noise because in the inference we won't pass it real image we will just pass some random noise as we did with the generator of GANs as well here also we will just pass random noise but the actual label actual text because we want generated or we want generated images in a directional way so directed generation of images so we will also pass the prompt so here the prompt is ast astronaut riding a horse so we have the noise we also have the 
label astronaut riding the horse and finally we will only use the uh, denoising module because we have just passed the noise and what it will do it will try to remove noise remove noise along with the textual information to start generating uh, astronaut with which who is riding a horse and you can see here we get a uh, astronaut who is riding the horse which is of 512 cross 512 dimension so uh, the uh, just re reiterating the ori in the training original image is converted into latent dimension smaller dimension through additional auto encoder forward pass and reverse pass happens along with the textual guidance to uh, learn the models which is the denoising model and once the model is trained we can just take random noise we can add some textual data what image we want to produce and it will use a unit based denoising module the de denoising network to generate image along with the textual guidance in the form of label that we have passed and clip embeddings are used for to convert those labels into embeddings so these embeddings in every iteration of denoising uh, uh, these textual guidance will be used and after like 50 60 passes whatever be the passes we have defined uh, it will start generating actual image and these are some realistic looking fascinated images created through stable diffusion and summarizing it inherent stability of stable diffusion arises from its non-adversarial incremental or iterative learning approach which is avo which avoids common pitfalls of GANs training so in GANs training we use the adversarial training where the two networks compete with each other but here the training is different it's a diffusion iteratively it uh, betters itself denoises the image to create realistic images which is seen to be more stable and uh, uh, winner over GAN way of training and uh, additionally its superior control and output quality make it a preferred choice for application requiring high fidelity image generation from nuanced textual description so stable diffusion is more stable uh, with enhanced training so that's it in this video where we look at GANs how the adversarial training of using game theory is utilized to train uh, generator and discriminator uh, in an adversarial manner at the end of the training uh, the generator becomes as good a as generating realistic images which can fold a discriminator and in the second uh, phase of the video we looked at stable diffusion the diffusion process which is iteratively noising and denoising data along with the textual guidance can produce more stable images and which is nowadays used across a lot of use cases to generate fascinating images videos and so on so hope you liked uh, the content please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more such updates bye